no getting away from it here. There was wrong done on both sides. So you'll need to you'll need to hear both sides. Today you will. As I always say, there's there's their side, our side, and somewhere in the middle lies the truth. Brexit in the context of Ireland um, identified the failure to address the root cause of the conflict that exists between Britain and Ireland. Which is? Well, partition itself and the denial of Irish national sovereignty. Brexit has the potential to break up the British state and as such it offers Irish Republicans an opportunity to realise our first great objective, the ending of the British occupation and the reunification of the Irish nation. Northern Ireland seems to be on everyone's mind these days. Brexit, the Irish Sea border, Irish unity, whatever your politics, it's on your mind. Despite its history, or maybe because of it, it's an amazing place to visit. One of the things that make it so lovely are the black taxi rides. Using the blend of history and sightseeing, these black cabs are driven by storytellers, or better yet, historians. A ride in these black cabs is just like visiting a museum, one replete with very witty and charming docents. Belfast has become known for its black taxi rides. It's a must do when you visit Northern Ireland. The black taxi drivers will give you the history of Northern Ireland, but what is the history of the black taxis? Born out of necessity, these cabs have now become a permanent feature of the Belfast tourism landscape. So, we needed to build this more secure. We changed the bottom into concrete. So the concrete base in the bottom of this wall, at some parts it can be up to a metre thick of concrete. And it's reinforced concrete. Along the top, it's roughly 45 foot tall, keeping Catholic over there from Protestant over here apart. Prior to the troubles, most people in Belfast and Northern Ireland use public transportation, commonly buses. But as the violence escalated and buses became targets on both sides of the conflict, everyday people needed a safe alternative to get to work or school or to visit family. The bitterness is still there even today, even though we're maybe 20 years, 23 years into the Good Friday Agreement. Protestants and Catholics seem to be more working together. No, I mean, I've never worked with our religion, only until yeah. I started this taxi company, yeah. or I would never have met anybody yeah. like that, and vice versa with them. Cabs became essential and the most common mode of transport, but you had to be very particular about which cab you got into, or whom you picked up. Like everything else, they too became sectarian. Whether you were from the Falls or Shankill, determined what cab you got into and whether or not you made it safely to your destination. After the Good Friday Agreement, when the violence abated, Belfast slowly opened itself back up to the world. People came back to Northern Ireland or visited for the first time. It is in this space that the black taxis began to take on a story of their own. In keeping with the Irish tradition, they became the narrators of Belfast. But rather than leaning on the past, they are determined to create a new future by telling the story from both sides of the divide. So when I'm going through the tour today, when I'm in a Protestant community, I'll be telling it from the Protestant point Absolutely. of view. But when I'm in a Catholic community, I'll be telling it from the Catholic point of view. Because I want you to feel you're getting an evenly balanced tour. And why we do this in our company is we're the only tour company in this city that's owned by a Protestant and Catholic. Yeah, so all our that. drivers pride ourselves in giving an evenly yeah, balanced point that. of view. One cab company that is doing this rather well is Cab Tours Belfast. Located on Great Victoria Street, this company is committed to providing its riders with history from both perspectives, hoping that you won't be able to tell whether they prefer orange or green. Basically what it was, people came to the city to see what we were fighting over and yeah. people being people were jumping into cabs and saying, we, listen, Belfast is the biggest open art gallery in Europe, all yes. the murals around our yes. city. So we're, we're, we're famous for it. So people was going around and saying, could you bring us to one of the murals? Uh, people being people, they're going to ask, what's this about? Right. right. What's that one about? And that's an industry of its own. Yeah. 
So guys, I'm born and reared in Belfast, and this is the easiest way for me to judge the place. Won't you see all those flags on the lampposts and all? We'll see them when I just turn out on the road. Okay. You know where you are. Yeah. You're on the Protestant side. When you don't see them, you know you're on the Catholic side. So easy to judge, guys. Yeah. Another telltale sign we're on the Protestant side without looking at flags, guys. Street signs here. Townsend Street. You look at that sign there. That tells you you're in a Protestant community. Because when we go into the Catholic side, all them signs are in two languages, English and Irish. And these are all our stupid telltale signs of where we are, guys. One know who was Protestant, who was a Catholic. Can't. There's no physical way of telling. Yeah. No physical way of telling. Namesakes will tell you. Okay. So if you call me Seamus, Sean or Eamon, you know I'm from here. Yeah. If you call me Billy, Willie, Sammy, I'm from over there. Right. So all these wee stupid things. Yeah. Um, I said the Isaac earlier on. Yeah. The difference between the religion. Catholics are better looking. <laughs> I'm only joking about that, don't be putting that on. <laughs> they, these open at 6 a.m. and they close at 6 p.m. Monday to Friday. At the weekend, they're kept shut all weekend. Now, the British Army came in in 69 and they stood here at these interfaces. We had them driving up. They might have stopped us and asked us, show me some ID, where are you coming from, where are you going to? Could have searched your car. Let you continue. Traveling from the opposite direction, you would have been asked the same questions, treated the same way. Why they done this is now we're currently in Catholic West Belfast. Mm -hmm. We go through those gates, Protestant West Belfast. The street, it's Townsend Street. This side, we're on it, is the Falls Road Catholic. That side, we're going to go into it is the Shankill Road Protestant. Now, you can see how close the two communities are. Right. The only reason why the gates is here is because throughout the years, you had a lot of people from that community killed by people from this community. But also, there was a lot of people in this community that were killed by people from that community. Right. These gates was up to try and stop the killings happening at that time. So to give you an idea of the length of this divide, it runs through the west of our city. It basically starts at these gates and continues towards that mountain. Oh, wow. The big block of flats there just behind us there, guys. Devas Tower. During the conflict, British soldiers, snipers, occupied the roof of that building 24-7 and the very top floor guys and you can understand why it's the tallest building in this community so those British soldiers had a bird's eye view of everything that was taking place one day the British army went into the bottom of that block of flats to bring food supplies to the soldiers at the top of it and the professional IRA killed four British soldiers at the bottom of the block so it was no longer safer for the army to come in on the ground the safest way to get food to the top of that tower guys there's the picture oh, helicopter wow, wow. they had to fly it in guys and you'll see the net yeah. setting the supplies on the roof. You'll also see a British sniper on it. And he's looking down into the Catholic Church, which is St. Peter's Catholic Church, on the opposite side of it. So that was the safest thing for the army to do. This is but this would have been a picture in the early 1972. Because every mural in our city tells you a story. Yeah. The bottom one tells you a story that our homes were being burned out. Mm. The top one tells you a story about the worst atrocity carried out to the people on the Shanka Road in 1993. He's better known as William of Orange in here. Better known as King Billy. And this is what we associate the marching season with yeah. every July yeah. from the Protestant yeah. faith, guys. When his army set sail here in 1690, the Pope of Rome blasted his Protestant army yeah. to defeat the Catholic King James. That seems ironic, guys. Yeah. But that's the way it was back in the days. Yeah. This army sailed into a wee place called Carrick Fergus Castle, 10 miles from here. And when he was sailing towards the shoreline here, they lit fire beacons to get his army onto the shorelines. So every year, in every Protestant community throughout Northern Ireland to celebrate his good victory, they'll build these big structures here, guys, with wooden pallets. We call them bonfires, guys. They come in all shapes and sizes. Once they're built at this height, it'll be decked out with the Irish flag, which is the green, white, and orange tricolour. And then they burn them. This causes great offence to the Catholic community sure. when they see this being done. Protestant people here say it's their culture and they've been doing it for many, many years. The mountain we spoke about up there, the Divis Mountain, yeah. Protestants go up that mountain on the 11th of July every night. They have a wee look inside to see that the view's like, and that's your view from the top of the mountain. These are all the Protestant areas that celebrate the Mons Great Victory over the Catholic King James, and then the following day the Orange Order will go on the march. Yeah. Some of those marches are very contentious, guys, because they march through Catholic communities. I can honestly say, like, like, there's no justification for murder. Yeah. You know, yeah. nothing can justify murder. Yeah. Uh, so there was no, there was no winners. We were all losers. What will you see in these tours? 
Each driver will take you to parts of the city that speak to the history of the Troubles. Each stop on the tour is a marker of the pain and conflict and a testament to the resiliency of the people. You'll also see people going about their lives, running errands, tending to their gardens, walking their dogs. But have no doubt, the history is complicated. The tours are filled with different murals, monuments and snapshots of the past and present, providing deeply contrasting points of view. Belfast is a place still healing from the past and challenged by difficult current realities. However, Belfast is once again evolving to meet the future, and these cabbies may just show us the way forward. <laughs>